every single day I get asked about the shot, the shot that made me who I am as a basketball player today, the shot that set me aside from every single rookie in the NBA, and I give the same response every time, determination. Every single successful legend or even successful player right now in the NBA have one thing in common, determination. These players did whatever it took to get to where they wanted to be, to become successful. To have that spotlight shine on their faces for that one moment to prove who they are as a person, as a player, and as a leader. The two players you see right here are the reason I am what I am today. Their tapes, their ethic, their ability to lead and put the team on the back whenever it is needed. Their ability to showcase with humbleness at times, and of course pride too. But their leadership and their power of words made me who I am today, and of course, their determination. Growing up in the 90s, I had only one thing in my mind that that was to go play in the NBA for the Chicago Bulls. So I started off like any other baller who wanted to make it big, starting to play some one-on-ones in Rucker Park. The first thing I loved to do was obviously shoot. I called my shot dot that eye, but I realized being in the NBA is not all about shooting. So when I was able to get into the NBA training camp, I made sure I worked on my vertical I made sure I worked on my stamina, my ball handling, because in the NBA, when you go up against other players, you're going to be running, and running is the key to the NBA. So I worked on my sprints, I worked on my cardio, I weight lifted, and I made sure that I would do whatever it would take to play against the big boys. I'm not going to lie, being in the NBA has a big time mental aspect. I would get hate all the time, people saying, Yo sub, you're never gonna be in the NBA. You don't have what it takes to be in the NBA. You're just a shooter and that's gonna get you nowhere. You're never gonna get into the NBA. You're never gonna be playing against Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. And that's where the haters were wrong. The determination that I put into this game finally made me to an NBA player and I like to call myself the Brown Mamba. And that brings me back to the mental moment, the moment where I'm in the NBA repping my hometown of Chicago, playing alongside with Derrick Rose, having the crowd on their feet, and witnessing a potential game winner by Dwayne Wade. But then I remembered all the clips I watched, all the determination I had, and there was no way in my mind that I was missing that shot, and I had one thing to say, just like old times, dot that I It's the opening weekend of the 2013 NFL season and we are in East Rutherford, New Jersey as the New York Jets are taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The New York Jets are looking to come out and make a statement early after they finished the 2012 season with a very disappointing 2-12 record. They have a new coach in Brian Carr and a new franchise quarterback in the first overall pick of the draft, Rob Rabinovich out of UCLA. After four years of dominance in the Pac-12, Rabinovich is going to be looking to make the smooth transition to the pro level and show that he is the real deal and he can lead an NFL team to a championship. As the rookie quarterback makes his way onto the field, the Jets fans are on their feet as the future of the franchise has arrived. The first play of the game is going to be a handoff to the rookie out of Mississippi State, Marcus Harmon. And as Rabinovich drops back for the first pass of his NFL career, he goes deep and that's an incompletion. So the Jets punt it away and with the first possession of their game, the Jaguars are able to get on the board with a rushing touchdown. We go ahead to the second quarter and the Jags leave by 7. As Harmon takes the handoff, he is once again swallowed up in the backfield. So that brings up 3rd and 13, and Rabinovich drops back. He hits Holmes, and he's wide open in the middle. He goes untouched. He is going to take that one 80 yards to the house. The Jets tie it back up at 7 apiece. The Jags get the ball back in on 2nd and 3. Gabbert drops back in the pocket. He throws it up, and Cecil Shorts the 3rd hauls it in. He is going to beat his man, and that's a touchdown. The Jags stay right back in it as they go back up 14-7. to 7. 
Rabinovich fakes the handoff and he finds Stephen Hill for a big gain and that's going to bring them into the Jaguars 30. As Rabinovich drops in the pocket, he finds Dustin Keller. Keller catches it and that's another touchdown. This is a real shootout we have going. And in the second quarter here, we are not done yet. As Rabinovich finds Keller once again in the middle of the field to bring the Jets into the Jaguars territory. On first and 10, Rabinovich drops back and right there again is Jeremy Curley. With a minute left in the half, the Jets are driving down, hoping to get on the board one last time. And once again, that's Dustin Keller. He's going to bring the Jets into the red zone and he, as he gets taken down at the Jags' seven-yard line. As Rabinovich finds Antonio Holmes, he's going to break the plane and get into the end zone. That is Holmes' second touchdown of the game. And in the first half alone, the rookie quarterback Rabinovich has three touchdowns. The Jags are going to run one last play in the first half, and right there is Cecil Schwartz, no one near him. The last defender misses, and he's going to take that one in for his second touchdown of the day. We're in the third quarter here, and Blaine Gabbert's just going to throw this one to Mercedes Lewis, and he's going to bring that one into the end zone. Jacksonville goes back up by a touchdown. And we go ahead to the fourth quarter here. It's the 31-24 game, and right there, Robinovich finds Antonio Holmes wide open once again. That is Holmes' third touchdown on the game, and he has come back this season with a Bang. Once again, we are deadlocked here at 31 to 31. With the minute left in the game on third and short, the Jets make a huge stop to hold the Jags to a field goal. So in his first career game, Rob Rabinovich is going to get a chance to lead the New York Jets down the field to win the game. On first and 10, he's going to find Santonio Holmes for a five-yard gain as Holmes gets taken out of bounds. That's going to bring up second and five. A quick screen pass to Harmon does not succeed as Harmon gets taken out and that's going to make it third and 14. On third and 14, Rabinovich finds Holmes once again. That's going to pick up seven yards. And here it is, fourth and seven, the biggest play of the game. Rabinovich throws it up, and Hill comes down with it. Hill is running down the sideline. He's going to take that one all the way. That's a touchdown. Stephen Hill connects with Rob Rabinovich on an 80-yard game-winning touchdown reception. That is huge. The Jets go up 38-34 to with 20 seconds left in the game. And here we are with the last play of the game as Blaine Gabbert's going to throw it up. That's up, and it's down. Jets win. Rob Rabinovich in his first career game throws for 400 plus yards and 5 touchdowns. There is a new star in town as the Rabinovich era has begun in New York.